Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football, another Saturday in the books, another Sunday afternoon where we get a new AP poll top 25 time for the boys still to kind of pick it apart. And this is one of my favorite episodes that we do every single week. Number one, and most importantly, it's an absolute war zone in the comment section, and I wouldn't want to have it any other way. A lot of different ways you can stack these teams from across the country. It's been a blast talking ball with you guys in the comment section. Can't thank y'all enough. If you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We can't thank you guys enough for all the support. Let it fly in the comment section as usual. Dude, let's start with how we normally start it. Let's talk about some teams that we think are flying under the radar, underrated in this AP poll top 25. I'll give you the tee box here. Where are we going? I'm not sure they've caught up to how good Ole Miss is getting, especially on the offense yeah. side of the ball. I mean, this is a team that's been playing good defense all year. You've seen some real choppiness in it. Kind of unexpected, frankly, from what their offense looked like early in that SEC schedule. But, man, they're catching some fire. Put up a big, big, big number on Arkansas. I think Arkansas is a really good defense. So I look at this Ole Miss team. I think they're getting really, really dangerous. And look at their shots proven on Saturday against Georgia. But they're getting yeah. There. The Ole Miss is one that I think is underrated too. And I'm not necessarily going to get on the table and bang for them to be a top ten team in the country because like the resume, they don't deserve to be a top ten team. But they're playing like a top ten team in the country. And if they continue to, you know, kind of go on the trajectory they're at. This is an Ole Miss team that we know from a roster standpoint, this is one of the best teams in the country. Not enough people recognize how dang good this Ole Miss defense is. And with the offense starting to turn it on, it becomes one of the most dangerous teams that we see in college football. Again, you said it best, a chance to get yourself back into the top 10. If you can take down number two, Georgia this weekend, Dill, I'm going to go underrated. I'm going to go to Ohio State coming in at number three. And they're only underrated by one spot. I think they should be the number two team in the country. Dill, quite frankly, I think Miami should be above Georgia too. Like Miami's undefeated. Yeah, look, Miami has question marks, specifically in that secondary. I totally get that. But you look at that Georgia team, we got a common opponent right there, right? Miami went on the road against Florida when they were healthy at quarterback and absolutely stomped them. I mean, you saw Florida-Georgia neutral site this weekend. It was a close game, even though Florida was rocking with a walk on at quarterback for three quarters of it. Dill, Georgia is not – look, I think Oregon is the by far the clear number one team in the country. Not by far, but it's the clear number one team in the country. There's a gap, and I would rather bet on a Cam Ward-led Miami Hurricanes team right now than a Georgia offense that with the way Carson Beck is playing, like they're, they're, they're just not inspiring a ton of confidence with me. And from the eyeball test, it's been sloppy. So give me Ohio State and Miami over Georgia. No, I, I do still five. think Georgia's ceiling, and again, like we can debate whether that should be how you do it. I do think like Ohio State, I like what they're doing. I certainly like what their offense showed in terms of like leaning into a little bit more of what they can do, running the ball with the quarterback involved. I think that made a huge difference, frankly, against Penn State. And they certainly have the ability to be explosive as explosive as well through the air. So I don't disagree with you. I think Ohio State certainly has an argument for number two. Where I think it gets tough is Miami because, again, like we talk about a team that's going – I mean, they're playing stressful games with every team they play right now. And I don't think – that bodes particularly well when you get down the stretch yeah. and have to pull some real big dogs. Yeah, and they're not like great teams. Like that that Duke offense is not very good. They threw for over 300 yards. I'm with you. Like Miami has things they need to clean up, but Georgia does too. And quite frankly, if I had to clean up a secondary versus a quarterback, like I'd rather bet on cleaning up a secondary. Now, the argument is – like, look, we've seen Carson back play really good football. We haven't really seen him play consistent good football in 2024 just yet. So I'm kind of with you in this. That Georgia argument that I just had, it kind of also has to deal with another overrated team, I think, is that's Texas. What's Texas's best win that we see in 2024? I mean, Michigan on the road, Vandy on the road by three points. Like, Texas in conference, they got beat badly by Georgia. And then they've played Oklahoma in Mississippi State, who are two of the worst teams in the SEC. I, I look at the SEC, and I guess I, what I'm trying to say here is the top end of the SEC versus some of the top end teams, specifically in the Big Ten, is there that big of a difference? 
That's what I wonder, because frankly, I look at all three of the Big Ten teams. I think they all look almost better in a certain sense, because you're right. I mean, I don't totally agree with the Texas. Like, again, you play who you play. They obviously had a very bad game against Georgia, and I think that game got got away from them a little bit quick with yeah. early turnovers and getting behind. And Georgia's just a tough team to play from behind like that, and I don't think they were able to put as much pressure on Carson Beck as has been put on him in certain games. So, again, everything didn't exactly work in that Georgia game, but I still look, that's a really complete team. I think that defense is vastly underrated. I think the team speed looks really good. I think the secondary is playing at a much higher level, and the defensive line still isn't taking a huge step back. So, I look, I honestly like where Texas is at. I probably have them, frankly, over Miami. I think where you really get into that debate is, is Penn State and Tennessee because I like, hey, Penn State's a good team. I mean, they were inside the five against Ohio State twice, zero points. They score a touchdown on one of those. That's a very different ball game. And they don't look now. The box score is not going to tell you the whole story, but Nico looked really good against tennis or, or Kentucky, I should say, on Saturday. If he plays well, that's a really dangerous Yeah, Yeah, that, that's the, the interesting conversation when I'm up here being an idiot saying, like, Georgia and Texas are overrated. It's like I don't necessarily know if I'm banging the table for like some of those teams six through ten to jump them. What I think you could just chalk this up to is, you know, outside of Oregon, that looks like a really complete team that has the NFL talent to be the best team in the country. Two through ten, like there's just a there's a there's a lot of really good football teams that aren't complete teams. They still have a ton of question marks. That's kind of what it comes down to. Yeah, I look at Penn State. They played Ohio State tough. Um, I'm probably okay with dropping them down to six. I wouldn't want to go any farther. You their said their lack week. of playmaking on the boundary, it's, it's really, such really a problem. Really, like, scary. Because, I mean, yeah. you just like, look, if you're going to just have to drive the ball the way they need to drive it, game in and game out, it's really, really tough to move it. And you really start to see that when you play the good defenses. So, Again, Tyler Warren's great. I think the running back plays good, but their inability to do really anything on the boundary, it, it's a huge problem. Yeah, my eyeballs are on Tennessee because if I didn't get as many looks at the Tennessee-Kentucky game as you did, man, if Nico even reaches 80% of his potential in 2024 with how good that Tennessee defense is, you can you can get me on board for Tennessee being a dangerous. Now their pass catchers they need to play a little bit better, frankly, than they did Saturday. But again, I think you look if Nico's on point, they blow out Alabama. They really a, they're a really tough team to deal with if, if he was playing better in some of those early. Or yeah. Now games. you want to see him just put it together a little bit more consistently. Dill Indiana getting look. We we I know I was the one who long. had the the biggest question marks about Indiana. Like I saw them dominating. I saw them being undefeated. I'm like, you're playing like UCLA, you're playing Northwestern. They're getting into a little bit more of the meat of their schedule. You know, I think Nebraska's a solid football team. I think Washington's a solid football team. I think Michigan state's a solid football team. It looks the same brother. Like they even went down 10 early against uh, Michigan state. And then they rattled off 47 straight points to win 10 to 47. It ain't flashy, man, but this Indiana team, especially in a landscape of college football where a lot of these other teams in the top 10 have, I would say, some some glaring question marks, they ain't a question mark about Indiana. Like They do a lot of different things at a very high level, and when you can be a complete team in a college football landscape where there's just not many complete teams right now, this Indiana team is going to be dangerous. I think you can say the same thing for BYU. I think Indiana is probably a little bit more battle tested. So I'm okay with Indiana being a, a spot above BYU. They look like they're the team to beat the big 12 right now. Yeah. And, and granted, I still want to see what like the big 12 is compared to the big 10 and the yes. ACC, Frank, obviously the SEC as well. But, like, I still want to see it. Cause I just look like, I don't think Iowa state's a good team. I know they obviously finally lost. I think we can maybe stop pretending they're a top 10 team at this point. Because they really aren't. I mean, you but can't the thing is, the thing is, though, without what sorry to interrupt you, is like BYU, though they've like kind of proven their damn solid football team. They beat SMU on the road, who I remind you now is a top Asterix, team in the country. Asterix. No, yeah, Kevin kind knows. of. I I think you got to start giving some respect to BYU. Like, look, I was in that boat. The BYU fans fed me my uh, my medicine. I've taken my medicine. I've come out the other side saying like you got to respect teams that can just win on Saturdays because we're seeing a lot of teams drop games. They shouldn't 
Indiana has looked awesome doing it. BYU on aggregate has looked really good doing it as well. At a certain point, we got to start giving some respect to these teams that are winning on Saturdays. I- I'm fired up for that BYU. I've, I've come full the way around on Indiana, much less so on BYU. Personally. Yeah, that that's probably fair, just because the question marks we have within the landscape of the Big Twelve. Like I I, I understand that question mark 100. percent Notre Dame coming in at 10, Alabama 11. Um, I'm okay with it. Like Alabama continues to be that team where it's like, what version of Alabama are you going to get on a week to week basis? Um, I look at that Alabama LSU game at night in Baton Rouge this weekend saying that's kind of like a college football playoff elimination game. Like whoever wins that is in the driver's seat to make the college football playoffs. Whoever loses that probably not getting into the college football playoffs. Boys, you stayed at 12. Though. I'll give you that. Like, Look, we know they have the one of the best players in all of college football in Ashton Genty. That that defense is is really not that good, though. Um, they can be solid against the run. I, I'm interested. I think Boise State will get into the playoffs. We've seen Boise – like, they're, what's their only loss? It's on the road by three good points one. to good the number loss, one team. It's a, it's a good loss. And so I'm excited to see Boise State, which I think we'll see in the college football playoffs. Dill, SMU – I know you the, and they're just them. they're just like an unstoppable offense. I've cut like I don't know like can anybody line up and just slow that offense down with Kevin Kevin Jennings and Red Lashley and they got some real good weapons. It's just such a fast team right now. I don't know how like again similar to like Colorado, which just feels like again a little bit more mobility at corner quarterback, certainly less probably throwing potential, but just their team speed in general. It's just. It looks like teams are playing with nine. People. What I love most about SMU is one they they throttled a Pitt team that beat Cuse really bad and was a top twenty team going into that matchup. Now I don't think Pitt's all that good. But one they're taking care of business. Still number two, they have so many different playmakers. They got like seven guys who have like twenty plus catches on the year. Like it's just like so many. Day. And they've lost some of their best players like RJ Maryland. That's a we we kind of said it all all the month of October. Like I don't know if SMU is truly a college football playoff team, like a top twelve team in the country. Like it or not, we're going to be having that conversation coming. Clemson, in November. Clemson opened the door for them quite nicely, frankly, because now they went out and run it. They're in the ACC championship game, and they're going to be a really really tough team to leave out, even if they play a close one against Miami. Even let's say LSU jumps Texas A and M. Uh, obviously Texas A and M has the head to head. I um I still would leave Texas A and M over LSU. Like you look at that LSU lost neutral site to USC and say yikes. Like uh, especially with Texas A and M having to head that over LSU. Like if you were to ask me right now, what team should make the college football playoffs, Texas A and M or LSU? I'd probably still say Texas A and M based off the resume of all right. There are two losses. I mean, one was on the road to South Carolina. The other was to a top ten team in Notre Dame. You look at LSU. One they lost head to head against Texas A and M. And one of their losses was against a, a, a USC team that is not very good in the Big Ten. So I, I would probably have Texas a and over LSU. Yeah, same. And I don't if you're going to rank them next to each other, like one, like 14, 15, let's say. You might as well see, give. I don't see how you don't use the head to head as the barometer. Again, I don't agree yeah. that like the head to head should be the end all be all because obviously there's more games than one in a football season. When teams are that tight, they're really tight there, right? I think I don't see how you can't use the head to head as as a yeah. You're you're right. Um, Ole Miss should be okay. I, they shouldn't be higher than any sixteen. Like I get that. Power like, ratings, power yeah, ratings. They're higher than sixteen. They're, they're a top ten team. They're playing like a top ten team in the country right now. Um, Iowa State. You guys kind of know my take on Iowa State. You know my take on Iowa State. I, I'm okay. I mean, like one loss to Iowa State probably would have them a little bit lower, but that's okay. Army rolling. Clemson, dude, they fooled us all. Uh, seven days ago, I was uh, banging the table for Clemson to be a top 10 team. Thought they were a legitimate danger in the college football playoffs. It turns out they were just rolling some really bad teams in the ACC. Played a Louisville team that is much better than what the record says. Got absolutely trounced at home. It, I mean, at this point, Dill, like you look at the two losses, blown out by Georgia, beat very bad by Louisville, and say, like, should they even be a top 25 team? Because right now, like, 
where where are Clemson's good wins? They haven't beat a single team that I think is very good in the landscape of college football. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I still look at that paper, and I know you can't do it all by that, but they've beaten up the beat. They've beaten up the teams they're supposed to beat up. Of course, I still look. I think that's still a solid team. Again, there's certainly no ceiling. It feels like at this team, I don't know that they have the offense to really get out there and play good football against really good defenses. And a lot of that, frankly, I mean, Klubnik just doesn't play good ball when he has adversity going against him. That's been such a problem for him pretty much his whole career. It reared its head again against Louisville. It's just like the game speeds up for him way too much and he makes poor decisions and they just can't get on track. So again, I think their ceiling has pretty much been declared as, as maybe not really high, but they're still a really high floor team. That's still a really good See, team. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I think their ceiling is decently high. I think they just played really bad against Louisville. But again, yeah, but like do the you resumes, think that offense can get into that gear against a good team? I mean, I don't know because now it's like been like three or four years now. It feels like where we keep like, can that yeah. offense get rolling in a really big situation? And, and then the bigger storyline is like the the Clemson defense is like. I wouldn't say that they're not bad. I ain't getting up here and saying they're bad, but it's not the high impact Clemson defense that we're used to seeing. They had zero sacks, three tackles for loss against Louisville. Like it's just not a front seven that we, I thought it was going to be top five front seven in the country. It certainly hasn't been that to start the year. Dill Kansas state Pitt probably should be out of the ranks. In my opinion, South Carolina needs to be in the rankings and I get South Carolina, a little bit of a roller coaster, but you take a look at that team and say, coming off a, a, a massive win against Texas A&M, they blow out Oklahoma. I mean, their, their losses are a tight one to Bama, a very tight one to LSU. They got beat badly by Ole Miss, but those are all like quite good teams. I look at South Carolina and say, I, I'd have South Carolina over Kansas State, Pitt, Vandy, and Louisville. Yeah, I don't I don't get how you can. I mean, South Carolina feels like a top 20 team to me, probably minimum. I look like, I mean, again, when Lenore Sellers doesn't make bad mistakes, and obviously I was saying that with Arkansas, and they've gone the opposite way on I me. Mean, they kept making the mistakes. They get beat a couple times. So I get like, okay, yeah, that's part of the game is your quarterback playing clean ball. But Lenore Sellers is just making so much progress, I feel like in terms of being responsible on the field, making good plays, and also just like his instincts to run the ball are much better. It feels like he's getting out of things and he's keeping that team on schedule a little bit more. I I don't see how South Carolina is not a top 20 team because I look at like them playing these teams that are in front of them. They're just too much of a handful on that defensive line. I just don't see how these these type of teams deal with them. Yeah, no, I'm with you. That defense is a lot better than people like to recognize. And, they kind of found their identity against Texas A&M last night. And I'll close out on this. Like, Just keep an eye on Colorado. Uh, the Big 12, it, you just have, I mean, like Kansas State, Iowa State lose it. Like, it's kind of just like I think anybody can beat anybody on any given day. And Colorado is starting to play some really good football. They got some, obviously the best quarterback in that conference in Shadur Sanders. They got some serious dudes on the outside. The offensive line, again, I think people just think back to that Nebraska game. That's probably the last game people watched of Colorado. It's significantly better. And so just keep an eye on Colorado in, in the landscape of the Big 12. Dude, we'll close One it out there. One team I want to throw in there is Minnesota. I'm not sure Minnesota doesn't belong in this top 25. I look like, again, that's a really solid defense. And Brosmer's starting to play really good ball. Like yeah, they're, they are a bad, bad loss early against North Carolina. But their losses to Michigan and Iowa are probably closer than even the scoreboard indicated, maybe less so to Michigan because they certainly got speed bag in the first half. But that loss to Iowa, I mean, that was on – kind of could go 50-50, it felt like, until into the fourth quarter. So that's a really – good. I think that's a team that probably should be – It's a team the that's trending in the right direction. I don't know if I'd have them – like, I don't know if the resume is a top 25 team – but they're, they're, they're playing good, and you're right. Max Brosmer is playing some really good football. All right, let it fly in the comments section. Again, I, I got some hot takes lower on Georgia. I'm sure the Georgia fans are going to get at me. Not, I'm kind of interested Georgia fans. Like, am I being too hard on Georgia? Because I, I feel like I've seen a lot of Georgia fans being pretty hard on this football team as well. They're the expectations are people. high. I know that. Yeah, definitely not Bobo people. Let it fly in the comments section. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We'll talk to y'all later. Peace.